Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yes! Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> and I am super elated to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop video today. It looks like we are going to Barcelona to an event called Lindy Hopper's Delight 2020. It looks as if this is a teacher's demonstration. So let's take a look at what these teachers are going to do. These are some of my favorite dancers in the world, and I'm going to give you guys my opinion. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You will hear nothing but truth here on my channel, folks, and I am not afraid to tell you exactly how I feel about my opinion. So stay tuned, and let's get right into it. Okay, let's get myself comfortable. I might see something I've never seen before, but I might not. And you all know me, I am pumped up about creativity and artistry. And these dancers are technically proficient. So let's see what they do with it. Come on out, Elise. Ah, okay, Sky and Frida. All right, some classic Lindy Hop moves. This is what I really appreciate about this couple is they respect the craft, they respect what's come before. So you're gonna always see some of the more fundamental swing dance moves. And they're gonna do it with top-notch control so that you can always see what's gonna come next, some predictability that's there, and just beautiful, beautiful, uh, connection between themselves. All right, Remy and Ali. I love I love them because of the energy level. Let's see what happens. Yeah, just keeping that energy up. So this so this looks like it's just a kind of a like a jam so far. All right. So, let's see what happens next. I don't know what's gonna happen next, but we will double check. Make sure. Okay, so it looks like, okay, yeah, so it looks like it's kind of a improv slash choreographed piece. A little bit of California routine. This is the safe routine to do when you gotta get together with other instructors and like uh, improvise a little bit, but have something choreographed. Cause you gotta have a show, right? You gotta have a little show. Uh. Uh. Wow. Boom. Yes. Yes, it looks like they're having fun. You know, that's one of my more important things to think about is instructors look like they're having fun and it's hard to have fun doing this when you do it every other weekend teaching at different events constantly having to be in front of a group of people everybody's looking at you to see if you're happy and smiling or in a good mood and notice them and i i can understand how tiring and exhausting it can become um you know doing a presentation like this so it looked as if they were having a good time and that made me happy to watch I'll tell you what, um, that is good. That is good to see. Now, I, I will tell you, um, watching this, I always feel like a little bit of excitement when I get a chance to see my peers dance because it's like, you know, going to a movie and it's a sequel. You want to kind of see what's going to happen. You know the premise. You're excited about it. It could be a prequel per se. And there's anticipation, you've been reading blogs, you've been watching all kinds of trailers for it. And when you finally see it, there's just this excitement level, nervousness level, because you don't know if it's gonna live up to your previous expectations. And, and I don't know if that's the best way I can describe it, but that's the sensation I get whenever I watch 
uh, people who are actually in the game with me, you know, really doing this seriously as an art form. Very, very few people. Like I tell you before, I tell you guys all the time, there were Lindy Hop is really like an, a, a sport, right? And you have thousands of people in the stands that like Lindy Hop, they kind of participated and they got their favorite heroes and teams. And you got a few coaches. Those are kind of the people who've been in the game for a long time, whose bodies are kind of getting older and they have a lot of wisdom from all their years. And then you have the players, some of those people who are just out there making it happen. When you think about the ratios of people who are actually in this doing the dance and not just, you know, appreciating the dance vicariously, there's not that many people. It's not that many people that are actually doing it, you know, seriously. So whenever I get a chance to see people who could simultaneously be a coach, but also are still in the game, taking care of their bodies and, and just doing the best they can, that's always impressive to me. That, that makes me excited. In fact, this is a very special time in Lindy Hop because you have some of the dancers who have been around for a long time, who have a lot of experience, who are maturing. A lot of them are starting families. I've got two kids. I'm a decade in. I started when I started a family. So my entire experience has been this maturation process of how do I make this work with my life and all of this. And, and it's an interesting time to see really good dancers become like middle-aged dancers. It's one of my favorite times because a lot of my influences before swing dancing were some of the more classic dancers known throughout the 20th century. Your Fred Astaire's, your Gene Kelly's, your Donald O'Connor's, all of those great dancers from that time period, some of their best dancing was in their late 40s, early 50s. If that's hard to believe, it's crazy. I still am flattered when I go back and watch a lot of their work and I think, man, I'm not working hard enough. Oh, he <laughs> still just got me rhythmic, rhythmically. I look at some of that and it's just, it's fascinating. I even, I even think more so when I look at the vintage Lindy Hop clips because many of those dancers were the originators of a lot of these movements. So you guys know me, I like a compliment sandwich. I like to tell you stuff I like and then I'm gonna tell you stuff I don't like and then I'm gonna end it with a happy note. So let me get, let me segue in some of the things I don't like about this presentation. It's not that I didn't like it for it being classic moves. It's not that I didn't like it because it was choreographed. Here's what I don't like. These are some of the dancers that have global recognition from a very small populace. When I say that word global, it doesn't mean billions of people know. It means, you know, maybe 80,000 people know who these dancers are when you think about it. That's nothing. Hardly anybody knows about Lindy Hop. And when I look at that, I, I see that there is, there's not enough real competition. And for me, overrating presentations like this is extremely dangerous for an art form. The reason I say overrating it is because I could easily go, yeah, these are some of my favorite people and completely entangle my affinity for their past performances and accomplishments with a presentation that is quite frankly mediocre. And if anybody else did that, people would say, oh, pff, they're okay. They haven't done anything new in ages and they're sitting there leading everybody else and teaching all these workshops. They're not innovating or adding anything new to the genre. And in fact, the moves that they're doing are not even theirs. They're classic moves. For those individuals that like to call a spade a spade, this is a real problem. <sighs> Calm myself down. If I put this whole screen in black and white silhouette form, the unfortunate thing is, is I can barely tell the difference between these two couples. I don't know who's the leader and I don't know who's the copy. I don't like that. These people are supposed to be the best of the best of the best of the best of the best. And I can barely even tell a difference. This type of approach to creativity is so antithetical to the heart of jazz. I don't like that. I think that makes Lindy Hop too homogenous, too safe too calculated, too controlled. And that's not what jazz is. There should be so much diversity of ideas coming from the people at the top that audiences would not tolerate anything but something fresh and new and distinct and creative and excellent. We should have a plethora of people to pull from. 
Where are all those people? So when I see this, these dancers have been doing some of these same things for years. The exact same moves. Nothing wrong with that if that's what your style is. You want to be classic and say, hey, this is all the moves I'm going to do. I'm only going to do new moves if it's choreographed in a routine. I'm only going to do classic moves when I'm social dancing. Great. But I think Lindy Hop is suffering because we don't have enough people. I don't blame these dancers for it. But what I do question is where are all the students? Where are all the people that came behind these people who had original ideas? Were those ideas flourishing? Were those ideas suppressed? I don't know. I know the world is full of politics. I know the world is full of flawed people. I, I'm not perfect. No one is. But at the same time, I think, how is it possible? If, if any person who doesn't know these people sees this performance and goes, that was pretty okay. They see, if, they, if that's their reaction, most people would not be praised at all. But the fact that it's these people that I know, because I know them, I, I'm placing more value on them because I know them. It's a bit of nostalgia. When I look at it, I go, I can do that. In fact, their students are imitating it better than them sometimes. So what's the big idea? What's the big deal? Who cares? That's how I feel sometimes after watching a performance like this. It doesn't even matter if it's from these particular dancers. It's the fact that it is from them that's bothersome. So this love-hate relationship with seeing people who've been around for a long time and I don't see a maturation of new ideas. I see safe. I see comfortable. I see privileged. You just kind of can just do whatever you want to do. Everybody's going to scream anyway. But for me, that's, that's the part I don't blame these dancers for because there is a segment always of someone who wants to just do simple things and make them look good all the time. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend that every single dancer that's supposedly good is supposed to do the exact same things? The exact same way of manipulating the technique, the same tonality, the same types of swagger, the same head movements, the same type of... I, for me, I'm, I'm split. I like it, but I don't like it. There's a, there's a part of me, again, that looks at this kind of swing dancing where it's so polished and so elongated where you can see the movements coming and super predictable. Nothing wrong with it, but when it's all the time, you don't really see any complexity. There's no change. There's, there's nothing that is a surprise. All you can do is say, man, I love that dancer because of some reason. But in many cases, it, it isn't based on what they're doing right there. I love Jay-Z, but Eminem's better. I'm sorry. He's a better rapper. I'm sorry he is. But it's the fact that, well, you can't say that, Jamin. That's Jay-Z. He's, you know, he's one of the last few ones we got left. <laughs> that can do it. Who's not dead? We're living in a culture now that is post-truth. You can't even acknowledge things that are right in front of your face. And if you do, you're ostracized by the people who are in political power who like to exempt themselves from the truth. <sighs> Calm down. And I don't say these particular dancers are doing that, but I just know that's the flawed part of humanity that gets involved with art forms and it kind of suppresses it and it keeps it nice and controlled and good for business as usual. I felt like they're not trying to do anything. They're just being safe. Maybe they didn't have time to come up with something, but even in the social dancing part, it just seemed formulaic and bland. And yet, people are still going, woo, like it's amazing or it's hard. You may not agree with my opinion and that should be completely fine. So that's how I feel about it. But I'm gonna tell you right now, with my compliment sandwich, Here's what I will say about these dancers. I'm not gonna tell you who, but at least two of these dancers, and they're not actually partnered together, are two of my favorites in the world. One for the very fact of control, highlighting the idea that you don't have to do a whole bunch of fancy stuff. You can do what you can with what you have the best way possible and flourish. And I will always respect him for that. 
That's the part I always respect. Much like Benny Goodman. He wasn't necessarily the best clarinet player. I think Artie Shaw was better. But the fact that Benny Goodman knew when to play, when not to play, when to make certain things swing so much harder because of the focus on making it swingable in his music, total respect. And that dancer for me reminds me of Benny Goodman. The follower I'm talking about, I love it because of her diversity. She can do this particular style that she was doing tonight and flow and be super stretchy and predictable, but then she can also move and stop. She can work with the partner whose movements in their body are not as elastic. So there's surprises and different changes in the music and, and visually what they're doing. And I think that's fascinating as a follower to have that much diversity and skill set to still be kind of a like a chameleon be, and be yourself, but there's two pieces of herself. And I think she's been one of the most influential dancers for me simply because it taught me I'm not just one style. I can adjust to what I want to do and who I'm dancing with. So that helped me develop my own creativity to say, well, if I'm dancing with these kind of people, I'll dance this way. If I'm dancing with this kind of person, I'm going to dance a different way. But either way, there are going to be two Jamin Jacksons, one who can do this, one who can do this. And I'm going to develop those and mature those in a way where I can excel. I don't believe swing and jazz is so calculated, so clean, and so polished that there are no imperfections. Therefore, we couldn't improvise. I think the rhythm section should be tight, but there has to be something that's different and changing all the time. That's what made jazz what it is. People working in concert with others, using their individual expressions, their individual fingerprints to make a mark on this music and on this dance. And that's what I think Lindy Hop needs more. I, don't, I do not think it needs more homogenous movement and ideas and textures that all look the same. That just tells me there's a lot of people who are just simply afraid, simply afraid to lose the acceptance that they have by being themselves, and they would just acquiesce to copying their favorite people. And I get it. It's sad. But don't do that. We need you. We need your ingenuity, guys. I'm talking to you teachers. I'm talking to my peers. I'm talking to you. No one should feel safe since we don't own Lindy Hop. We are in a lease with Lindy Hop. It will be here long after we're all gone. So we better add our significant value to the genre and not make it stagnate. We need to keep this thing going so that people a hundred years from now are inspired, not satiated, not placated, not turned into clones, but inspired to be themselves. That's what makes me fired up. So what do you guys think about this? That's my opinion. That's true. I have a love-hate relationship with this particular performance. <sighs> it's like eating too much food. You're happy and miserable at the same time. So anyway, let me know what you guys think about this particular video in the comment section. If you're not in the game yet, I'm telling you, you need to get involved with Lindy Hop. I, some of these people taught me. I had to go around different places and different events. I went over to 30 something events my first year trying to learn how it actually works on a mechanical basic level. I was already a dancer. I didn't need any creativity. I didn't need to just mimic other people's ideas. I had ideas, but I didn't know how to assimilate them in a basic swing dance language. So I would encourage you, you should check out my fundamentals membership. I spent over 10,000 hours traveling the world teaching, social dancing, just to figure out a basic formula so that regular people, wherever you're at in the world, can fix yourself while you're social dancing. You don't need to take as much time as it took me to discover these concepts, but you need to be able to know what they are so that you do not take a long time to mature uh, with the technique. Because in my opinion, the technique's only 25% of what we're doing. 
The other 75% of this dance is extremely subjective and that's the part that we need to see. That's more of you and your creativity. So if you want to be unlocked, I encourage you to check out my Fundamentals membership. You can get a taste of that by uh, subscribing to below to my uh, 30 plus classes. I got a lot of creativity, a lot of ingenuity that we're posting every single week for our online community. So. With that said, let me know what you guys thought about this particular presentation in the comment section. And if I don't see you guys in my class online, hopefully I'll get a chance to see some of your comments in the reaction, reaction section of another video. Take care.